Hello, Bugs. Welcome back. So today I want to talk about um, the importance of heterosexual men embracing their feminine side. All right. So uh, what prompted this video is I was watching this, you know, quite popular reality TV show, Married at First Sight. And one of the guys on there is very into his feminine side, okay? Yet he is quite masculine, all right? So he's asking to borrow his new wife's pearls and earrings, and he also has like a kilt, but it's not really a kilt, it's kind of like a skirt type thing. And he's showing her right away that, hey, I really embrace my feminine side. So, having said that, so that's what prompted me to do this video for all of those out there who may be a little confused about a man having uh, feminine mannerisms, okay? So, believe it or not, there are different types of men who have feminine qualities, you know, on certain levels, that is. So the more common type of male who embraces his femininity, yeah, he is quite heterosexual. Like he is totally straight. And oftentimes, you know, he's misconstrued as being either straight out gay or bi, you know, by friends and families or people who don't even know him. And, and that's, I'm sure that's always, you know, not a good thing to have done to you, you know, just being, prejudged in, in certain ways and, and at certain times. So the more common behaviors that you'll see with this type of male will be just always kind of mild mannered, soft spoken, you know, can be a little charming, but he is always um, easy to talk to, empathetic, compassionate, and may have feminine mannerisms, which is why he's probably often identified or misidentified as someone who is homosexual or bisexual or other, okay? And with this type of guy, regardless of how masculine he may appear, he always has to deal with this, right? Okay, and so that's the more common type of person who is, or man, I should say, who is just into his femininity and is, there isn't really anything that he can do about it because that's just how he is. That's that's his chemical makeup, right? So there's very little that can be done with, with about that, which is why at times, and I'm sure, unless, unless you just don't give a damn, you know, it may be disappointing or annoying for lack of a better term, okay? And so we have the other type of guys who may um, come off as, again, masculine, but they may be into doing certain things that you see a female doing, all right? So for example, my ex, very masculine looking guy, brawny type, um, big, heavy, deep voice, you know, six feet one, big beard, you would think he was an athlete, but he's not athletic at all because he doesn't like to be hurt or wounded. So, uh, yeah, one would think that he was just this big toughie on the outside. But when it was just he and I, he would soften and tap into his more feminine side. And I would say, hey, you want to go get a mani-pedi tomorrow? Yeah, I'm in. Or you want to go have a spa day, get facials? I'm in. At one time or a couple times I had to do makeup for a bridal party. That was when I was really into makeup. Just before YouTube, or actually right at the beginning. And I needed a canvas. And I said, hey, can I just do this look on you? I just want to make sure the colors are right. He was like, yeah, sure. Now, a man who was not really into any type of feminine, you know, displays of whatever would not have done that but for some reason I felt comfortable asking him that because I don't know maybe because of how he's how he was always gentle and like very easy to talk to and will always see a situation from both sides now granted he is a Gemini 
So I think that would probably have something to do with it, being able to tap in to that feminine side. But for a guy who was just all man, would never have let me put any kind of makeup on. Just the eyes, though. It was just the eyes, not a face. But he would have never let me do that. But he felt quite comfortable and has even asked me to paint one side of his hands, his nails, black. Because he wanted to look like a rocker dude, you know. The chip nail, the chip polish, that sort of thing. So you have that type of guy who doesn't mind being able to tap in every now and then to his femininity and um, just embrace that softer side of himself. Even at times being able to cry in front of me. Now, ladies, I don't know about you, but I am a sucker for when a guy cries like that, like there. I love it because it allows me to tap into my more nurturing self and try to calm him and find out what's going on. I think it's sexy as hell and I can find ways to make him feel better. So I love it when a guy cries and I just want to say why most men try not to. That's just, it's silly. All right. So. Now we have the other type of male who really embraces his feminine side. This is the type of guy, like I mentioned, the guy from Married at First Sight, they go all the way. They wear the jewelry, they polish their nails. And I think now you see it's more like a trend, guys wearing nail polish on certain fingers, but it's, it, it's a meaning behind it. And you may see him you know, like I said, wearing certain jewelry or certain types of clothes, but yet he's quite masculine in other ways and quite heterosexual. Uh, take Dwayne Wade, for, for example. If you go back and you, you can Google and look at some of his pictures, you may see to where he comes off as a bit more feminine, yet he's straight, you know, he's married. Um, I don't know. I really don't know his full sexual preferences, but just to give you an example of what that is. So there are other guys who just takes it to a certain extent to where it's like very questionable um and yeah so that's that but here's what i really wanted to do this video about the importance of a, a heterosexual man or any man for that matter to tap into his more sensitive side the reason why that is is well we all have to at some point because if you don't you become this hardened, militant type individual who is hard to speak to, you know, have received compassion and empathy at certain times. You know, he just becomes a hard person to talk to. Like he's not going to be willing to agree with you on certain topics. It's just always just so ah, aggressive. And you're not going to get that if you need someone to be a bit more gentle with you. Especially if you're in a relationship, you know, you need your companion to come down to your level, come down a few notches and show some compassion and be a bit, a bit more gentle versus so rigid. You know, this is the type of guy who doesn't cry at all. And so this is why it is important for each man, you know, to embrace that not all the time. Unless, of course, you like the first example I gave to where it's just part of who they are. All right. But at times, like just say 80-20, you have to tap into it. And this is and, and during that time, it's probably because you have to. You have to be more understanding, more engaging, be able to come down a few notches and, and understand what your person who's quite feminine, you know, just so you can can get whatever, whatever, you know, you, you know what I'm trying to say. But you have to at some point. Otherwise, being rigid and so firm and not being able to shed a tear, showing any type of emotion, that turns you into a lot of things. Sociopath, psychopathic. You have to cry at some point. That is what tear ducts are for. You have to show an emotional side to yourself at some point in time. It could be a critical or maybe even traumatic moment in your life, but you have to share that in order to be able to give or receive the type of embrace that you need during that time, okay? As humans, we have both male and feminine qualities or behaviors or, or what up, traits. I, as a female, embrace my masculinity all the time when it is needed. 
I am the type of woman who's going to put the desk together, put chairs together. You know, hell, if I knew how to change my oil, I would do that as well. I just need someone to show me. The other week, I'm doing touch-ups with the paint because I have very high assumptions, you know, take the extended paint holder and get up. You know, I just, I know how to do those things. Whereas my mother is very, very feminine. She would actually call someone to do that and, and spend more money doing so. Okay. I'm not, I tap into my masculinity and I do anything that is considered a masculine chore because I can, you know, it's, it helps me help myself in many ways. I help me save money for one, and it lets me know that, hey, I'm capable of doing that as well. It builds my confidence a little bit, you know. It lets me know that, hey, I can lift this as well as any other man. I lift heavy things all the time. So I'm always tapping into my masculine side, and it is quite beneficial because I have to. I need to. If you don't, especially as a female, you become reliant upon other people to do it. So you're always gonna find yourself calling someone, hey, can you come do this for me? Can you do that for me? Versus trying to do it for yourself. So we have to tap, tap in to the other side, to ourselves at some point, it's quite beneficial. It's just who we are as, as a human, especially for men, okay? There isn't anything wrong with being feminine at times. If, if it, that's part of who your chemical makeup is, well then by all, just be yourself. If you are the more masculine type and you're probably wondering why your relationship is on the brink of destruction, well, perhaps you've just been too, too frigid and you need to soften yourself a little more from time to time. Like I said, it doesn't have to be all the time, but you have to know when to tap in. That's key. All right. All right, my love. So I just wanted to share this video with you. Let me know if you have any other questions regarding it. If this has been an issue for you, be sure to comment that. If this video was helpful, please like and definitely share. All of my information will be linked down below if you need any further coaching. But that is all for now, my loves. I thank you for joining me always. Until next time.